I now pronounce you husband and wife. A state change. What happened in that moment? You ceased being single, you now are married. Now, if you look at the etymology of the word husband, it is one to till, it is to care, it is to be in charge of. My favorite definition, if you look back to the Latin, is freeholder, to hold freely, without shackle. When I look at relationships, I look at timing of relationships, I look at why do things happen at a given time. I look at, do we get married in the spring of our life? Do we get married in the fall? Do we get married to our business? There are some of us that have a better relationship with our business calendar than we do our family calendar. <laughs> I found myself in that, and then somebody just told me, they said, you realize you've been on time every single day, but you've been willing to push back your relationship with your godson soccer practice if it's needed. You realize you wouldn't push back a business meeting with me? It made me think. I started really looking at my relationships. I said, okay, well, Stephen Covey says relationships are one thing. You know, if you turn to the pages, you can get the principles of leadership, you can get private victories. But I realized there was one thing. This image, how many people have seen this image? If you look at it one way, it's a hag. If you look at it another, it's a beautiful young lady. All depends on how you look at it. So I started looking at relationships a little bit differently. I said, what is relationships? Let's use the etymology of the words that I know around promise, commitment. What does commitment mean? Most of my life I lived it as if I gave my word, it was my job to fulfill it. If you gave me your word, it was your job to deliver. And if you didn't and we were in a contract, I'd see you in court. Not a problem. Not personal, it's business. And I started looking at the fact that I had a better relationship with my cell phone company than I had with my partner. I knew that I owed them this much money on this much time, and if that didn't happen, there was a consequence. Anybody ever had to deal with that? I had the same relationship with my mortgage company. <laughs> <laughs> I even had the same relationship with the guys that wash my car. I started looking at what does commitment mean? And I realized, when I went back to the word commitment, metere, the Latin metere, it means to unite, to bring together. It's not a one-way street. I looked at promise. That's to give in the future, to deliver my word in the future. Now, my grandfather was a man. He was a man's man. <clears throat> When Cecil Farrell said something, it made a difference. Cecil Farrell was a man of God. Cecil Farrell was also a man that had a very violent past. But when the newspaper in his area put down an ad that said, Cecil Farrell says this is the best tractor, their sales went up by 50%. That was the ad. I don't know anything about tractors, but if my granddaddy said that this was the best one, I'd buy two. <laughs> Just who he was. I looked at what does Dale Carnegie have to say when it comes to winning friends and influencing people, how to stop worrying and start living. Dale had a lot of good things to say. But I kept missing a point that I couldn't get. I kept looking. I, I looked in my Bible. I said, my granddaddy found the answer. Where, where, where's that? You know, maybe, maybe it's... Maybe it's in one of these pages. Maybe there's going to be something in the Old Testament. No, maybe it's the New Testament. <laughs> but I couldn't see the forest for the trees. And then I said, okay. God didn't have it, so maybe it's on the earth. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I might have done a little bit of research here. <laughs> Maybe the answer is in the Kabbalah book of sex. But still, once again, I was unable to see the most important part. When I looked at commitment, I realized there was a mission statement in there that I missed over and over and over again. I realized I was giving my word like it was something that I could pick up and hand to you and then depart and act like 
it would handle itself. Or act like you would give me your word and I would just wait for you to come and pick it up when you, the time came due. I forgot about the most important part, the terry, to unite. That if I give you my word, we and you accept my word. That's the difference. I give you my word and you accept. When I say, do you, Trevor, take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife? What do you have to say before they accept that? I will. You accept her word. <laughs> Does she accept your word? <laughs> Hopefully. And if not, that's okay. I looked at relationship-based in commitment, meaning you and I are in business together, together. And it's not my job to hang you from a tree if you don't deliver. It's my job actually to engage with you in business, with you in relationships, with you. If you're my godson and you've got a soccer practice at 1030 on Tuesday morning, then I said I'd be there. My job's not to hold him to account for his word to be there. I'm involved in driving. I'm involved in making sure he can deliver on his word because it's our word as soon as I say we are going to do this. That it's my responsibility to my partner to help her be faithful. It's my responsibility with my partner to make sure we handle the finances of the household. Now when I look at relationships, when I look at commitment, I realize it doesn't have to be so damn heavy and significant. What if it's simply a game that we're playing? <clears throat> Picture this. Here we are, we're seated at a chess table. I have my pieces, you have your pieces. But we're going to rearrange them. Now, instead of doing the first two lines, we're going to put them on all the black spaces in the first three rows, and we're going to play by the rule of checkers. What game will we play? What game? Kickers. And why? We agreed. We changed the rules. Mm -hmm. The rules give the game. <coughs> the agreements give the relationship. Now, if we're playing checkers, and somewhere in there I take my knight and I decide he's going to go up two and over one, I quit playing checkers. No longer playing checkers. If I decide to go have an affair with someone else, I'm no longer playing the game of my relationship. There's a flag on the play! Not because I did something wrong, but because I quit playing the game of the relationship. I quit honoring my word, and I quit being a man that could be relied on to play the game of business, the game of relationship. And that is what made my grandfather different. He honored his word as in, I give you my word, and we together will go and create. I give you my word, and we together will do what there is to do. The thing I loved about my grandfather is he said, Hey, Jeremy, time to clean up. We're going to go singing. Like, what do you mean we're going to go singing at the old folks' home? And my grandfather had a beautiful voice. And the first time he said that to me, I didn't really understand, and in 15 minutes he was gone. Not because he didn't love me, but because he created his word, and his word was his bond. He was married to my grandfather for 64 years, and it wasn't easy. But he didn't get into it <laughs> only for himself. He didn't get into it only for her. He actually got into it as a we-based conversation. Now, I say the speech to my topic today is all of the timing. The time is now. Time is your choice. It's yours to do with you what you wish. I thank you for your time this morning. You've given it very generously. And I appreciate each and every one of you for giving me the opportunity to be here today.